dumbbell legs only. Here we go, we are in the final phase of our dumbbell only program and now we're gonna be doing kind of the classic split. And today, of course, as I said, we're going to be doing legs. Leg day. Every dude's favorite. Oh, and yeah. it is for us at least Monday, so we're gonna start it off right, we're gonna get them out of the way, that always feels rewarding and it's gonna be a tough one, so get ready. Here we go. Yeah. So the first exercise we have is going to be squats. And we're going to be using the dumbbells held on the shoulders. Now this is gonna be a little bit more difficult than let's say a farmer squats when you're holding to your side of course and something like that. The center of gravity is lowered. You feel a little bit more grounded and secure and stable. But once you raise your center of gravity by holding the weights on your shoulders, you're gonna feel a lot of instability in there, which is good, it's what we want. It makes it a little bit more difficult. Obviously we're in the later stages now. Uh, we're making things more difficult for you so that way you're constantly progressing um, but with something like this once you get it in the position it can be fairly difficult to get the right position so it might take some getting used to take a little lighter to make sure um, you know you're able to perform this but essentially it's just like a normal squat you're going to be taking your feet a little bit wider uh, it's about shoulder width or wider and just squatting down keep that nice straight and rigid back and pressing back up to the top position and you'll feel these dumbbells want to move around so you want to take a nice grip Ooh, make sure they don't fall off your shoulders and as Brandon was saying find a weight which works for you don't let your ego take over and think well I got to lift heavy start a little bit lighter because it really is a balancing act squats are hard enough but then when you're trying to make sure those weights stay in place on your shoulders there's a lot going on there so excellent exercise you can tell I'm very out of breath this one's taking it out of me big time, but very happy we're including it in today's workout. Yeah. So as you can see, the dumbbells are held this, held this way. You can always kind of hold them here as well. Kind of find the position that works best for you. Oh, but there we go. Whew, that's a good one. <laughs> Getting into position. On to the next exercise, which is gonna be the sumo deadlift. Now it's a deadlift because we're starting the weight in the dead position. Um, we're gonna have to pick it up off the floor and in the sumo position, you're really going to take a very wide stance. That's kind of the point of the exercise. It's really working kind of the inner uh, thigh area, also the glutes, because you're really externally rotating your legs to make sure you get a lot of activation in those areas and you're pretty much keeping an upright torso in this. It's gonna work on a lot of grip too because of course you're gonna have to grab the dumbbell that's on the floor. So as you can tell, um, i taking my legs really far out and also externally rotating. You won't really want your knees to fall your toes. You can tell almost kind of like, almost looks like you're about to do the splits. You know what I mean? Get it really wide. And the meat is when you kind of squat down this business, you're gonna feel it in that inner thigh, the hip flexors. And once you kind of extend upwards in your knees and your hips, really feel those glutes and quads fire up like crazy. So that's kind of the point. So as you can see here, grasping the bar, chest up, neutral chin, pressing up, squeeze, and then back down. Ooh. Shorter range of motion, but as you kind of keep that time under tension in, immediately go up to the next rep. Boom, back up, squeeze. Now oh, you're gonna start feeling the burn real quick. And of course, it's working your grip, a little bit in the biceps, traps, a little bit in the lats, so you get a lot of activation in this exercise, which makes it awesome. Exercise number three, and we are moving on to a bit more of kind of an isolation. We're really trying to focus on the hamstrings, but it's really kind of the whole posterior chain, lower back, glutes, and hamstrings together uh, by performing the Romanian deadlifts. Now, it's funny the name Romanian deadlifts. It's not necessarily a deadlift. You're not starting from the dead position to the floor position. Usually, you'll get it in the kind of the racked position, and your starting position is with the weights right at the mid-thigh area, and you're lowering yourself down to the bottom position, reaching that stretch reflex, where you feel that nice deep stretch in the hamstrings, and you kind of use that elasticity to bring yourself to the top position. Kind of like a squat, where you're starting in the top position, lowering yourself down, kind of reaching that stretch reflex, and then exploding to the top position. So the RDLs are more um, geared towards that. You really want to reach that stretch position as much as you can, and to be able to feel that a little bit more, because some people were like, well, I don't really feel too much. Most of the times because your lower back is starting to compensate for the inflexible, uh, their inflexibility in your hamstrings. So what you really want to do is arch your lower back, bring your chest up, and then when you get over that bend over position, you'll immediately feel that stretch in the hamstring. So it's one thing to keep in mind. But with this, you want to keep your feet just about hip width 
and toes pointing forward at all times there. Um, kind of get the weight, starting positions here, and keep that chest up, bow forward, slight bend in the knees, nice deep stretch, and then extending the hips, nice squeeze. Now that's gonna be the glutes activating to bring yourself to the full extension there. That full extension is really gonna be hitting those glutes. Of course, when you bring yourself down, that full stretch of the hamstrings, the hamstrings are pulling you up, and then the final extension, glutes firing up, and that's what you really wanna focus on. The stretch, full extension. Oh yeah. And of course, you get your grip involved too, because you have to hold those dumbbells pretty tight. So, whew, it's a good one. So we are on to the Bulgarian split squats. We're gonna make it a little bit more difficult, not only by adding weight, holding the dumbbells, but also adding some jumping. So you're gonna have to use a lot more force and consume a bit more energy to make sure you propel yourself up uh, with enough force to jump. So it's a lot harder, but what you'll see is we're utilizing a bench, of course you can use a chair, couch, whatever you want, basically elevating one leg. You're gonna be stepping out in kind of that split squat position, hence the Bulgarian split squats. And uh, what you don't wanna do is take too narrow of a step so when you're coming down, your heel is lifting off the floor and your knees really far away from your toe there. It's gonna put unnecessary pressure on your knees, just put you in the wrong position. So what you wanna do, take a step farther enough forward, that way when you squat down with an upright torso, everything's in line, you're pushing through your midfoot, and you're basically that nice solid structure. Although, there'll still be some balance in play, because in this position, you know, it's not the most, um, you know, you don't have the most base support here, it's split, so you kind of have to make sure you're engaging your core enough to really stabilize yourself. But once you get down this position, you're accelerating yourself up, slight jump, and then catching yourself down deceleration. Now with the jump, you're not only getting hip extension and knee extension in there, working the quads and glutes, but you're gonna have to get plantar flexion as well, and your foot pushing your heels in, and you use a lot of your calf as well. So it's working your quads, glutes, calves, it's not someone. But, we're gonna do this weighted, so it's gonna be a lot more difficult. So next up, we got the Lang hamstring curls. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how the hell are you gonna isolate the hamstrings doing a hamstring curl with a dumbbell? Well, thankfully, there's a little bit of a dumbbell hack you can do uh, performing the hamstring curls. And you're gonna be basically grasping the dumbbell with your feet. Now, Depending on how big your feet are, or how strong your ankles are, or how heavy you're going, is gonna really dictate how this exercise works. If you wanna start light, make sure you're in the proper position and your feet are strong enough to hold the dumbbell in place so that way it basically doesn't fall on you. But this is basically gonna how, how it's going. The setup is gonna be kind of grabbing that dumbbell with your feet, just like so. As you can see, it takes a little time. But this is the end position here. You bring it down to the nice stretch position and then curl it back up. Just like so, nice and slow. Make sure you have that dumbbell right inside your feet and you're good to go. As you can see, it's pretty simple motion. Basically, like, kind of like a bicep curl for the legs. Oh yeah. A uh, Little bit more of an advanced movement. Make sure you're safe. You don't drop the dumbbell on yourself. So keep it light, practice a little bit and then slowly work up in weight, but that definitely works. After going through that murderer's row of leg exercises, this one feels almost like a little bit of a cool down, but we couldn't forget the calves and thankfully, even if the only option you have is dumbbells, you can still hit them. As you can see, I'm just going ahead and putting one single dumbbell on my, right around the knee area, knee, lower thigh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and rep it out one leg at a time. It's gonna be 12 reps on each calf and we're doing four sets. Not the most exciting exercise in the world, but it's definitely one of those things that you can't neglect, much like the hamstrings. You've got to remember the calves. All right, the last exercise, and it's going to be the abdominals. Now we're going to be doing some accordion crunches. It's one of our favorites, you know. And you'll notice in this exercise that it's not only working your abdominals, it's going to work a little bit in your lower back too, because I guess you could say this is more of a core exercise. Your lower back is going to have to kind of engage because it is keeping you in this 
kind of straight motion here to stabilize the spine, and then you bring yourself to top position. But you'll also notice amongst your core, your hip flexors will also be involved. Of course, we just did a long leg workout. My legs are pretty fatigued and pumped. So when you kind of pull your lower body in, be working the hip flexors a little bit in the rectus femoris area too. So it's okay to feel that, especially after a big leg workout. We're gonna pump 30 reps of these out. Oh yeah. Oh, those are burning, definitely. Whew. Oh yeah. And the good news is, if you're working out at home, maybe in your garage, and you don't have access to a bench, you can always just do it on the floor. So I am gonna be doing the alternate variation of this exercise. And thankfully, there's usually an alternate exercise or an alternate variation for almost every exercise, which is definitely a good thing. Wow, what a way to end this workout. You're gonna be doing three sets of that, accordion crunches. There we go. We are in the final phase of our dumbbell plan. If you wanna pick it up, link in description. Help support us, we love that. Helps us to keep going and we'll see you next time for our next episode of the Buff Dudes Dumbbell Series. Until next time, stay buff.